Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to try to walk you through 3.2.4, that's the now serving display. But I'm not going to focus on the now serving display itself because that's a project, I'm not, I'm not explaining any of that, that's up to students to figure out on their own. But what I do want to explain, if you're like me, if you're teaching this class, you look at this multiplexer addition to the curriculum and you go, oh my gosh, like this feels overwhelming, right? So I'm just going to try to walk through and give a little explanation that kind of follows the instructions and explain what's going on here, what is this circuit, how does it work, okay? And then hopefully you can take this and, and use it in your classroom or have your students figure it out too. So we have um, the internal clock on the MyDAC board, which in the MyDAC board I'm referring to is this one here, okay? So this looks familiar, right? The internal clock on this thing is, is producing a signal at uh, two megahertz, two million hertz per second. So um, that's, that's a lot, okay, that's really quick. And so um, what we're going to do then is these here are a series of divide by two counters. So all they're doing is this, um, just to give you an idea, MR stands for master reset. So if this happened to be a one pot going into this, it would reset this counter to zero and hold it there, which is why we have a digital low going into it. Okay, so that basically means we're not gonna use the reset. We're gonna let the counter do its thing. Um, in addition to that, here's the clock going into the first one, and then the output of this divide by two goes into the input of this one, this one, and then this one until we finally have a signal out here. And really, the only idea is every time it passes through these, this is a series of, uh, I think it's a seven, it's a series of seven divide by two counters, I believe, which is what the seven's for. Um, and it just really, really slows down the signal is really what you need to understand. So as opposed to doing two million hertz, two million cycles per second on the clock, this is down to like a really slow number. I, I think it's maybe like one hertz or something like that. It's, it's very small, okay? So what does that do then, okay? What that does for us is it alternates this circuit that's set up, it alternates back and forth between the tens, let's see, this is the ones digit and the tens digit on our board. It alternates back and forth one time per second then. And so what you're gonna see is the number eight flash and then the number four flash to make the number 84. It'll go eight, four, eight, four, eight, four. And that's the way the circuit runs as intended if you have it wired correctly, okay? Now, <clears throat> Other things that are interesting about this then, okay, so this clock is either they're producing a zero or a one. And so as it gets to this point and junctions out, okay, at this node, then it can go one of two ways. It can either go through this time buffer, which basically is just a timing mechanism so that these two inputs run at the same time, because this is going through a not gate. So in other words, when the clock puts out a one, a one passes through to pin output 34, and then this flips to a zero for 33. So one of the digits will be activated and the other digit will be deactivated at any given time, okay? The way that we make this work with the CMOD S6 that's on our computer or on, on, our, on our board is this. You may have noticed in activity 2.4 that this is how you wired it from the tutorial, right? And you'll see that digit one is connected to ground right now. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take 33 and 34 that would be this pin or about, about right here or so. And you're gonna take those pins and you're gonna wire directly into digit one and digit zero. And in essence, you're creating, instead of something being permanently grounded, permanently on for digit one, you're going to create something that's sometimes grounded and sometimes not grounded. Sometimes it's getting a one put into it, sometimes it's putting a zero into it. In other words, sometimes it's activated, sometimes it's deactivated. So that's that part of the circuit, okay? That's what this up here does. Now. As, opposed, as, as far as this stuff goes here, what we have are a bunch of multiplexers. So what it does is it takes two signals, signal A and signal B, and signal A is representing the eight, okay, or sorry, I say take that back. Signal A here is the four of the ones digit, and signal B is the tens digit, okay? So A is the ones digit, B is the tens digit. And what it says for each segment then, for, so like the number eight, for instance, the number eight, segment A is on. So that's what the green wires represent are all the segments that are supposed to be on. Segment B, doesn't matter if it's a four or eight, they're both on, right? Back to this though, for a four, segment A, the top bar is not on for the number four. So that's all these are on the left-hand side is setting up which number is going to be displayed. So if you wanna mess around with these, you can, but all you're doing is changing an 84 to some other number, okay? Now, we have over here on these inputs, 
AB is a selector. So you'll notice here that it's connected to the clock. So when this is a zero, the A will be activated, and when it's a one, the B will be activated, or maybe I have that backwards. But either way, it's, it's flip-flopping which of the two signals will be passed through. Is it the A for the four, or is it the B for the eight that it's gonna pass through? It's going to put out this Y signal. Okay, there's our output for Y. It's gonna signal a signal out. The reason this inverter is here is because these are made for common anode, seven, seven, seven second displays, and we have common cathode built into the machine. So we have to output this and then reverse it. Otherwise, all of our segments would be backwards of what we wanted it to be. So like the number eight, everything would be off instead of everything would be on. So each of these is gonna have its own little inverter to invert the signal to get the zero that we want to come out of this whenever we want to actually display an LED segment, okay? These are going to go to pins 26 through 32, 26 through 32, which is the same as the tutorial if you have those boards still set up. Here's 26 through 32, which are going to segments A through G on the 7-7 display. And again, which one is activated at any given time is going to be determined by which one has the wire signal going into it from digit 1, digit 0, from 33 and 34. Now, down here at the bottom, why is this connected to low? Well, that's because... G is an enable, okay? So if we want this thing to even function, if we want it to be enabled, we have to provide a signal to it. Because of the bubble here, we know that this is an active low input. So we are connecting all of them to low at the same time. This black wire runs all the way up the entire series of multiplexers, which means all seven multiplexers will be running at the same time. Now, what they have the kids do in this particular lesson is they start off, you can just demonstrate this and transfer it to PLD if you have everything connected correctly. Whenever you get it transferred, you should see the thing flashing back and forth, eight, four, eight, four, eight, four on two displays next to each other. So it'll say the number 84 on those two digits. Then the next thing that they have you do in this particular circuit, I don't know what's playing here. Um, I got a different, I must have an old, there we go, okay. Now what we're gonna do then, and the second part of that is just kind of eliminate some of this stuff. We're gonna go get rid of this, and we're just gonna go tie this in right here, okay? And all I did by deleting those three and changing which in, where, where this goes is I just sped up the clock. So this two megahertz is gonna go way faster. So where we saw before, eight, four, eight, four, now the eight and the four are gonna be blinking so quickly it's kind of like a flip book. If you've ever seen a flip book where you made a cartoon out of it, something that moves, your brain can only handle about 24 images per second. So if you speed it up so quick, the eight and the four are both going to be appear to be on at the same time. But that's not what's actually going on. It's just an illusion, okay? Um, and why that's important is because that's kind of the way that we work things in the real world, that we save power. If we only have to power one segment at a time as opposed to both segments, you know, that's a 50% power reduction, which is going to be important. You know, energy is kind of a big deal. So now we have a multiplexed seven, sec seven second display. It's still flashing 848484, eight, eight, but it's doing it so fast that it looks like the number 84 is on at all times. Okay. I can also delete this little segment here. So now the question becomes, what do kids, what are they supposed to do with this? Okay. So in the actual project then, you can give them most of this, I think, and probably be okay. You could probably give them this entire thing and you have them use it to test it. But their goal will be to do this. You need to take these signals. Remember, A is for the ones digit and B over here is for the tens digit. Okay. And we're going to take all of this stuff that I just highlighted and delete it. And you're going to build a circuit out here that runs the ones digit. And you're going to take the output of that circuit and you're going to program it so it goes into A on each of these particular multiplexers. Then you're gonna build a, seven, a second different circuit, a section of circuit, I should say, and its output is going to be the tens digit and it's gonna run everything and it's gonna to connect to B in each of these circumstances. And in that doing so, okay, if they can run eight four and make the 84 appear, then by creating the two sections of segment for the ones digit and the 10 digit over here, they should be able to build a multiplexed seven segment display that actually has the now serving display and all of its characteristics. 
So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Um, I'm no expert on this stuff. I had to do a lot of Googling to figure out what it was, but I knew that I had struggled with it and I felt overwhelmed by it the first time I saw it. So hopefully this helps you understand a little bit of what's going on so you feel comfortable relaying that information to students.